Right, u is x squared. So this is negative sine of x squared times 2x. That's our answer. I like the other way better. You like the other way better, that's fine. I mean, I like the other way better too, but this gives you at least a procedure. You write down, you write down the composition broken up into two pieces. Then you take the derivative of each one with respect to whatever variable's there. And then you take these answers and multiply them together and then replace your u with x's. Let's do, let's do the next one. What was the second one I gave you? Wasn't that something to a power? Yeah, the, uh, x squared plus x minus 4. X squared minus x or plus x? Plus x minus 4. Plus x minus 4 to the 120? Okay, so what you would have to do here if you're going to use that method is you'd have to say, okay, well look, I've got y is equal to something to the 120th power, right? Mm -hmm. And then the something that I'm talking about is x squared plus x minus 4. And then I create my table. I say dy du. See, y and u are my variables, so that's why I'm doing dy du. The derivative of that is 120 u to the 119. And then the derivative of this, derivative of u, with respect to x, would be what? 2x plus 1. Right? Take derivative of that, you get 2x plus 1. Our answer is this times this. So the final answer here, dy dx, or y prime, you can just write y prime here, is 120u to the 119 times 2x plus 1. I have to have that in parentheses because there's two terms there. And the last thing to do is to re replace u with, what, what was u? x squared plus x minus 4. So you get 120 times x squared plus x minus 4 to the 119 times 2x plus 1, which is the exact same answer we got a second ago. Is this just making it worse for you or? This one's, this one's, let's do that last one that I had just done. The one that was, I don't even remember what it was, but it was three things together. Okay, tangent of, what was it, tangent? Sine of square root of x plus one. So this is a triple, right? This is a triple, three compositions. Let's do it with this, this table method. So the first thing I see is that I've got y is equal to tangent of u. Tangent of u. u is everything in there. u, I see as composition as well. It's sine of something, right? So I'm going to say sine of w. Any letter you want. But then w is what? The thing that's inside of the sine. Square root of x plus 1. You see? Does that make sense or no? Yes. You like this or not? No, you don't like it? OK, but I'm going to do it. So I have a table that has three things in it now, right? What's the derivative of tangent of u? Well, dy du secant squared u, right? That's what that is. What's derivative of u with respect to w? What's du dw? Well, what's derivative of sine? Cosine. cosine. So this is cosine of w, right? What's the derivative of w with respect to x? Well, that's just 1 over 2 root x. My answer are these three things multiplied together. That's my answer. So I'm going to write that out. It'll be dy dx is secant squared u times cosine w times 1 over 2 root x. But you got to get everything back in terms of x. You can't leave things with w's and u's. So let's keep going. What was, uh, what was u? Secant squared, what was u? Sine of w, right? So this is secant squared of sine of w, cosine of w, times 1 over 2 root 
times 1 over root x. Okay, now I've got w's in there, don't I? What were the w's? Square root of x plus 1. So if I replace all the w's with square root of x plus 1, I have secant squared x, or secant squared of sine of square root of x plus 1, that's that, times cosine of w, but w was square root of x plus 1, that's cosine w, and then times 1 over 2 root x. That's the exact same answer that I got when I was covering things up with my, with my towel. If, you, if I walk into a Cal 2 class right now and ask them to differentiate this, nobody's making a table. Nobody in the class is making a table. Everybody's doing that mentally. All right, so we want to build to that, but this is always a fallback. And this is something that you can at least get yourself to learn, like as you're learning it. And then maybe you can start picking up on the pattern of how you cover things up and you know, work your way from the outside in. Are you all okay? <laughs> let's, let's do something else, let's do another one. I know I was going to give you some, but let's, let's keep working here. How about this? I want the derivative of that. What are your thoughts? You looking at quotient rule here? Yeah. I see a quotient as well. Hold on. <laughs> That's going to be loud on the video. Um, thank you. Um, I see a quotient as well. Everyone sees that? You could, you know, top and bottom. You could do quotient rule from last class. Could you also do this though? Is that the same thing? Yep. Right? Square root of something means raising it to the one half. And then if I want to bring it up, I just write it like that. And do you see if I do that, I have an inner function and an outer function? And I can just use the chain rule? My derivative will be, I start with the outer function. Let me, let me do it here. What's the inner function? The inner function is this clump of, of markers. What's the derivative of a clump of markers to the negative 1 half? Negative 1 half. The clump of markers, right, to the negative 3 halves, because you're subtracting 1 from that power. That's the power rule, right? What's in here? What is the most common mistake I see? People put what in here? No, they put cosine x in here. Like they try and take the, they're trying to do too much at one time. The chain rule says you start with the outer function, negative one half, this to the negative three halves, so sine x, right? That's what goes here. Then, now you're done with this, now go here and take the derivative. That's cosine x and multiply it. We're done with that problem. I'm going to do that problem again, but I'm going to do it, I'm going to just change it a little bit. Instead of 1 over the square root of sine x, I have x squared over the square root of sine x. All right. Can we still bring the square root of sine x up to the top like this? Yeah. yeah, sure. 
But see, we're not going to have a 1 next to it anymore, are we? What are we going to have next to it? X squared. So I could do this if I want. Okay, This is equal to uh, x squared parentheses sine x to the negative 1 half, right? That is true, yes? If I did that and wanted to take the derivative, what would I have to use? Product rule, right? There's your product right there, right? My other option is that I leave it like this. And I just do the quotient rule on it. It's your choice. Let's do it both ways. So you can see that it can be done either way. All right, so if I do the product rule over here, I have two functions. The f function and then the g function, right? So it's like something times something. And the derivative of something times something, right, is the derivative of the first one times the second one plus the derivative of the second one times the first one, yeah? That's what we learned last class. So y prime equals derivative of the first one, which is? 2x times the second one. Don't touch it, right? Sine x to the negative 1 half. And then what was it? Plus, good, plus. Now we need the derivative of this, don't we? The second function. Actually, didn't we do that just here? Yep. We just did that over here, so I don't have to go through this again. It's a chain rule, isn't it? So I have a product rule, but while I'm doing the product rule, I'm doing a chain rule as well. So the chain rule is built into the product rule somewhere. So taking derivative of this, I get the negative 1 half. I better put in parentheses. Negative 1 half sine x to the negative 3 halves times cosine x. That's this, right? Am I done? No, what am I missing? The x squared. Where's, where's this x squared coming from? I'm finishing the product rule, right? It was the derivative of the first one times the second plus the derivative of the second one times the first one. f prime g plus g prime f. It's a lot to keep track of now. You want to see this way? Let's do this way. If we did this one instead and we did quotient rule, the quotient rule is, quotient rule says that if we have something over something, the derivative is the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom times the top, all of that over the bottom squared. Right? So let's, let's apply, the, apply the rule. I'm going to write it this way. It's the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom times the top all over the bottom squared. Do y'all see, see the quotient rule there? Everyone see it? Some of the looks on your faces, I'm not sure. It's like the end of Titanic when Jack goes and goes into the abyss. You know what I mean? I'm just sticking with the morbid theme here. Are y'all okay? Look, this is you're here to try and learn chain rule. So if you have questions, you need to ask questions. If you just sit there and go like, I'll figure this out later, um, you're gonna probably struggle with that. Any questions? Okay. Is this derivative okay? 2x, yes. What about that one? It's not this. See, this had a negative power, didn't it? This was 1 over root x, and we brought it up, so it had a negative power up there. So let's see if you can't figure this out. I'm, I'm really hoping that you can do this one the way I want you to do it. Okay, I'm going to work on this piece right here, just over here, just on scratch work over here. 
Ah, okay, so I have square root of sine x, right? And I want to take the derivative of this. This is a composition, right? This is chain rule. You have an outer function. What's your outer function? The root. The root. Inner function is sine. Cover up the inner function. What is the derivative of the square root of my hand? What's the derivative of the square root of x? 1 over 2 root x. So what's the derivative of the square root of my hand? 1 over 2 roots of my hand. Am I done? No. Now times the derivative of my hand, which was the derivative of sine, so cosine x. That's the derivative of the square root of sine x. I could write that as cosine x over 2 root sine x if I wanted. Just kind of like pop this one up top. So I'm ready to finish this here. This is 2x square root sine x minus this derivative, which I just got cosine x over 2 root sine x times x squared. All of this over just sine x. What's interesting is that this answer <coughs> is also this answer. They're the same answer. They don't look the same, but they are the same answer. And it would be an interesting exercise to see if you could make this turn into that or make that turn into this. Probably easier to make this turn into that. Have I told you all the Bobby story? The Bobby story? I haven't told you the Bobby story? <clears throat> I don't think I have. <clears throat> so when I was first starting, um, when I was in graduate school, I had, in grad school you can become what's called a teaching assistant. <clears throat> and basically you work for the college and you, know, you do different things. And one of the things I had to do is I had to do uh, what, were called, what are called calculus um, recitations. So at major universities, what you do is you go to calculus class twice a week, and you only go for an hour and 15 minutes. Our class is an hour 40, right? So you go for an hour and 15 minutes twice a week, and then once a week, usually on a Friday, you go to, call, you go to this thing called recitation, which is basically this huge auditorium full of like 200, 300 students, and there's a person standing at the front that's there to answer questions about homework problems, about anything that related to the class. The professor's not there. It's just someone answering questions. So as a graduate student, I had, that was part of my job. I had a couple of recitations that I would walk in and be like, got any questions, you know? And I would sit there and do math problems, you know, whatever they'd ask me. So there was this one student, right, who I had told them, you know, call me Robert, call me Rob, whatever, call me Mr. D, um, and, uh, but don't call me Bob or Bobby because I don't go by Bob or Bobby. And, it's just not my thing. So this guy called me Bobby, right? He's like, hey, Bobby. Like, he, he just, I don't know, he didn't like me. So I did a problem like this in class, like in the recitation. I got to this point, and I was like, okay, and the rest, you know, it's just, you know, you could do different things algebraically. And he came in and complained, okay, to the professor that I needed to apologize to the class because I had given them, I'd done something wrong, and blah, blah, blah. And, Basically what it came down to was that the answer in the back of the book was like this, and then the answer I had gotten to in the recitation was this, and he didn't know how to do the algebra to get from there to there. So I had to sit him down and show him the algebra just to get him to see like, look, it's, it's just algebra. Now I understand it's not easy algebra, but it is at the end of the day just algebra. There's no calculus involved. So I always tell my students in Cal 1, look, a good challenge for yourself is to see if you can get your answers to look like the back of the book's answers. So, or not the back of the book, but you know, the online system, when you can click on answer, you're like, man, mine doesn't look right. It probably is right, it just doesn't, you haven't done the algebra to make it look like that yet. So first make sure you understand chain rule, then work on the algebra of getting it to look like the, the book's answers. Making sense? because that will help you later. Right now, if I did this and then also threw the extra algebra onto you, you would just, you'd start crying probably, because it just, 
we, let's, we, let's just work on the calculus part right now, okay? Bobby, yeah. I'll tell you more about that guy later. I've got more stories to him. There's a method that I use that I'm gonna use later in this class. I call it the Bobby method because he, he called it the Bobby method. So I call it the Bobby method now. All right, How, what are we gonna do here? I feel like I, feel like I don't know if y'all understand this or not. So let's just do some problems. I'm gonna give you some problems. How about that? How do you think you get good at chain rule? A bunch. You know what I would do if I were you, Cal 1 student, 2022? I would go to Google. I would say chain rule practice problems PDF and go print out a PDF, you know, set of 50 problems chain rule. You know, that's something I didn't have when I was a student. All I had was the textbook, right? And it had a few problems in it. This textbook has some problems. I don't think they're great. They're okay. Um, that's what I would do. Just do chain rule till you're like, until you feel comfortable. Um, let's see. Let's be nice to start. Try these. Y is equal to sine Curious to see what you do with those. Let's just go, let's start with those four problems right there. And it's, uh, let's see how much of this you can get done. I don't want to take more than like 12, 13 minutes. Just see how far you can get with this. Work with, help each other out, check with your neighbor, see if y'all are getting the same answers, all right? You're not turning this in. Raise your hand if you have a question. What you don't wanna do is just sit there and be like, okay, I just wanna wait 12 minutes and not do anything. I will be right back though. I'm gonna go blow my nose.
<clears throat> How about over here? What's going on? Yeah, we have the same. Did you all see what I did there yeah. with the box? Does that make any sense? Yes. So we change the box to four X's. Both of the X's in your secant tangent, both of those need to be four X's. So what I'm confused about in parentheses, yeah. is how come, like for this one, mm -hmm. we did um, the change rule, right? Yes. And then for this one, we did the product rule, because wouldn't that just be the same thing as that? Well, the difference between these two is that this one has an x squared. This one doesn't have anything in front, right? This is not, this is x squared times that. This is just that. It, but I mean, like, this one will be four x in front of it. Yeah. Which one? What did that happen? No, we did chain there. We didn't do product. Exactly. So then for this one, we did product. And there's something in front of it. Flip back. Where's the x squared here? Inside the cosine, right? So it's inside. It's squared outside? Well, only if there's something outside. I mean, this, this x squared is inside the cosine function, right? How would you say that? If, you were, if I asked you to read that to me, what would you say? Why? Y equals cosine and then of x squared. Oh, what did you say? <laughs> cosine what? Of x of, squared. You said of, right? Yes. Of means composition. Read that. Uh, read. Where is it? That one. Read that one to me. x squared times. Times. Right, you said times. But if I didn't have that there, then it's it implied that that's a product. It's implied. Okay. Right, it's implied. You would say x squared times, right, and then this is sine of x, right? Mm -hmm. So, I'm not sure if I'm answering your question or if I'm just confusing no. you more now. No, you're good. I was just confused as to why, like, this one's in front of it, but we're doing the change rule, and then this one's in front of it. But we're yeah. And we're doing the product There's a product between these two terms, so you have to use product rule, whereas the other one, the x squared lives inside the cosine, so that's not multiplication, that's composition. Because okay. you're saying of when you do it, right? So for right here, for this one, did uh -huh. it start it right? Product rule, exactly, because you have x times this, right? And look at this right here, sine, this is sine, how do you say that? No. I mean, to the square root of x? It's sine of oh, square root of x. Okay. See, that square root of x lives in the sine. That x in front is being multiplied times the so whole thing. So then after this, I would still have to do the chain rule? Yes. Now you're going to, when you take derivative of this, you need chain rule. On just the sine root x. Just this, you need chain rule. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And, okay. Try it. Work it out. Yep. Is that... So one there. Okay, so this you're doing product rule, right? So your derivative first one one times the second plus. Oh, you're not doing product. What are you doing? I'm not sure what you're doing now. No, I'm doing Okay, product rule plus. Okay, and now you need derivative of sine of the square root of x. Sine of this is this right here, not the x, but the sine root x. That's composition. So you're right there. This is right so far. The derivative of sine of root x is cosine root x, but you're missing something. Chain, chain rule, yeah. Did I say chain? Did I say product? You, you need the, right here, this right here should be the derivative of sine.